I'm a general, so I'll tell you right now. Um, I think I screwed up this war. I know I did. A commander's responsible in the U.S. Army for everything his unit does or fails to do. And my units failed in their basic mission to win these two campaigns. And I had key roles. I was a general officer in both theaters in command. Um, I think my fellow generals bear a share of that. And that is separate from, you know, political responsibility. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. But militarily, that was my job. And it was my job that if I couldn't do it with the resources available, which includes time, because we never really made it clear how long we were going to stay, how much we were committed, not being able to do that, I owed it to the political people, the people in civilian clothes that I worked for, to go back to them and say, hey, this is not going to work unless you give us more time or you sign a treaty or do that. I didn't do that. Why not? Partially, I think, because of, of how well the wars had started. And my trust, my absolute trust in our great all-volunteer military, in a way, I, I knew what had happened in Vietnam. I'd studied it, but I almost thought, hey, we're, this time we're going to get it right. We're going to stick with this. We've got great men and women. They're sorting things out on the ground. Guys like John, uh, where he was between Ramadi and Fallujah, a very tough area. His unit was a tank battalion, but they reconfigured themselves to do counterinsurgency and train Iraqi forces. That was happening in both countries all over. But here's the warning. Good tactical fights and things like that do not a victory make. What we needed was a national commitment and a strategic discussion, and that's on the generals. And I can tell you, speaking for this general, I didn't get it right.